The Razorback basketball team finally wraps up their regular season. A little preview into the SEC tournament where Arkansas can lie as well as the NCAA tournament. This is the Locked on Razorbacks podcast. You are Locked on Razorbacks, your daily podcast on the Arkansas Razorbacks. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. And welcome into the Locked On Razorbacks podcast. I am your host, John Neighbors. I am also the host of Out of Bounds. You can catch every weekday afternoon from 1 to 4 on 103.7 The Buzz and 1037thebuzz.com. This episode of Locked On Razorbacks is brought to you by Stat Hero. Stat Hero is reshaping the way that you play fantasy sports. Dozens of house based games to play daily. No sharks, no funky props, just your skill versus the lineups you choose. Sign up today at stathero.com slash locked on. Hope everybody had a wonderful weekend as uh, there is a lot to kind of unpack and to, to dive into when it comes to uh, Razorbacks, especially Razorback basketball. And uh, we're going to be uh, doing a little mixing and matching this week when it comes to basketball and football, maybe even some baseball sprinkled in as well. But I guess it's that point in time of the year where you kind of have that happening. But now, since Arkansas's final regular season game came to an end, uh, we, as I guess John Rothstein says, this is March. Now it is postseason play. Everything matters the most from here on out. This is where the seasons are made, successes are made. People decide whether or not the season was a success or a failure. All of it comes down to the next few weeks. And uh, to just like we could sit here and we could recap the Arkansas Tennessee game. And I, I think that, you know, we can talk about it just uh, just briefly because, you know, Arkansas had a furious comeback against Tennessee on the road. Uh, they didn't, Arkansas did not have a Dees Tony. Tennessee literally shot the ball better than anybody like ever could. They went 12 of 18 from three point land. It was at home and Arkansas still almost came back and won. Like, like Jackson Robinson got into the game. KK Robinson got into the game. There was foul trouble. Uh, you know, there, there was not very well, good shooting for Arkansas. Like all these things mixed in. It, it's amazing that this team was able to, furiously come back when they were down by as much as I think 23 point 24 points 24 points Arkansas was down in this game on the road against a bona fide top 15 team without one of their star players and they stormed back and almost tied it up almost won like I, other than going into the breakdowns of the game and everything like that like Arkansas did not play well to start uh Tennessee I mean I don't care who you are if you're coming out and you're shooting 12 of 18 from three-point land uh, you're not going to lose many games, especially being at home. Like all these things factoring into it and then seeing how Arkansas responded when they did get hit in the mouth and how they didn't give up and that they kept fighting. And it's just once again shows me and proves me that this team is ready. This team is ready for March. They're ready for March Madness. They're ready for postseason play. They are ready. I think we all knew that they were ready, but considering that they just do not give up. They do not like ever let anybody uh, beat them down or you know take full control of a game. Like I mean, think about it, folks. Arkansas in the two games that they've lost during this final stretch of the SEC play, they lost by one point on the road when they couldn't hit a water if they fell out of a boat uh, to Alabama against a really good team, and then they lost to Tennessee on the road where they shot twelve of eighteen from three point land. And it just dominated in the beginning of the game and almost, almost came back and won by four points. You're talking about five points, five points. And if you throw in the Vanderbilt game, six points. I know it's always about woulda, coulda, shoulda, but I mean, you're six points away from winning the SEC. You're five points away from winning the SEC. I mean, it's just amazing how the slim margin in these games can make such a difference, but it still comes down to the fight that this team has. Uh, I mean, I can't tell you how impressed I am by it. And that's to me why. I continue to believe that this team is built for a run in March. Now, since Arkansas finishes the regular season 24 and 7, uh, and they're 13 and 5 in conference play, like you know that you're going to be a team that's probably going to be seeded fairly high. Um, I know that uh, Joe Lenardi, kind of the most accurate bracketologist there is out there, has Arkansas as of right now as a four seed, the lowest of four seeds. And so I would be hard pressed to think that would change, but Arkansas does play. Uh, we'll get into the SEC tournament bracket and how that goes on, but Arkansas will 
probably play LSU in the first round, which we know the type of matchup nightmare that could be. But still, um, all that said is that, you know, they, they this is the moment that they wanted to find themselves in. And we'll find out the extent of the injury from Aldis Tony. Hopefully it's nothing too serious and hopefully he'll be able to come back in and 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 play really effectively uh, in, in postseason play and all those things too. Like hopefully all that happens. But the fact is, is that this team continues to just find ways. And if they can't find ways to win, they find ways to make it interesting. And at the end of the day, that's all that matters is winning. I get it. But you can't help but feel confident if you're a Razorback fan about what's going to happen in postseason play. Like you can't help but feel confident that this team is going to do all the things right in these games that even – even if they're down, even if they're down big, they still can come back. They still can have a chance to win because of the type of style and the type of mentality that this team has. And I know it comes down to favorable matchups. I mean, let's be honest, it's probably the most important thing when it comes to the NCAA tournament. But if they get the right draw, if they can be put in the right region, there is nothing there is, and I mean nothing that I believe that would keep this team from making a Final Four run. Now, some of you are saying that this is no. Hold on a second, there, buddy. You know, you know, we, you know we're we're talking about uh, a pipe dream. You're talking about a Final Four. I mean, Arkansas hasn't been to one since '95. The difficulty of getting there is next to impossible. And I would say, yeah, you're right. It is, but. When you have a basketball team that doesn't let the impossible impact them in these games, when you have a basketball team that doesn't allow teams to blow them out, doesn't allow their hot shooting and great start to impact the how, the how they finish, that doesn't allow teams to be able to, to basically do whatever they want across the board and then run out run them out of the gym. like They don't allow that to happen. When that that unlikeliness and that impossibility, if you will, is very evident and prevalent with this basketball team, it makes it a little bit easier to believe. It makes it easier for me to believe that this team can do it because they time and time again have proven me wrong and they've proven you wrong in games and matchups, whatever. Like if you would have told me that Arkansas was going to go undefeated against Auburn and Tennessee and Kentucky and LSU in that final four game stretch, I don't care if it's at home or not. If you told me they were going to do that, I was going to be like, "There's that's just highly unlikely. But they did. In all of those games, they found ways to win. The NCAA tournament will be here before we know it. I know that this SEC's tournament coming up, and we'll talk about that, but it, it just is really hard for me to look at everything going on with this team and not continue to believe. Even that loss against Tennessee, which, again, I, I don't think Tennessee does what they do, and I don't even know if Tennessee wins if Audis Tony plays, which I'm sure that'll – just rev up all the Tennessee volunteer people that are probably watching this podcast. But um, I don't, I don't think that if the, uh, if Aldis Tony plays in this game, that Tennessee does what they do. And I think Arkansas maybe even wins this game. It's always what it could have should. I get it. But just saying, I feel no different about my confidence level before the game than after the game. And you shouldn't either. This team's good. This team's got what it takes. But now it's time to put the money, your money where your mouth is. As postseason play, win or go home, that's what we're looking at right now. Football season might be over, but basketball is in full steam in both pro and college hoops. And for all the latest odds, total, totals, and player performance and props and where to find where the next coach is going to land, BetOnline.net remains your number one spot for all sports betting needs. BetOnline remains the best spot for your sports scores, podcasts, and news this season. And it's not just basketball. BetOnline.net is your source for hockey, boxing, and UFC odds right down to your Olympi Olympic coverage and information. Head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more about the trends and actions. Head over to BetOnline.net where the game starts. We also know that March Madness is pretty much upon us. We will know in less than a week where all these teams are going to be seated with Selection Sunday coming up. But you're going to be doing your pools, right? Don't do the usual stuff. You want the best. Go to runyourpool.com. Along with standard brackets, run your pool offers, game type uh, likes like Survivor and Pick X, which if you haven't done those, those are pretty fun in their own way. And they have options to edit scoring, and they offer more intel to make your picks, all the stuff that you won't find at ESPN 
or on CBS. And clearly, we believe in runyourpool.com here on the Locked On Razorbacks podcast because, like I said, we're running our brackets there ourselves. And there's no truer test than that. If you want to play against us for a shot at a cash prize, join us now at runyourpool.com slash locked on. And while you're there, create your own pool for your friends and family. Enter Pure Madness at checkout for $10 off your custom pool. Again, that's Pure Madness. That's runyourpool.com slash locked on for your chance to win a cash prize. We look forward to seeing and beating you there at runyourpool.com. You are locked on Razorbacks, your daily podcast on the Arkansas Razorbacks. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. All right, moving on into the next segment of the Locked On Razorbacks podcast, got the SEC tournament uh, officially set up. And uh, Arkansas does get the four seed, which, you know, and the margin between one through four is so slim that, you know, like what's the difference between being a three seed and a four seed, really? Um I know that Auburn won the regular season championship. Good for them. I'm sure that means a lot to them. Uh, but uh, now we know exactly how it's going to be set up. And I will be honest about this. Like, full disclosure. And if you disagree, that is fine. I'm not trying to change your mind on this. This is just my opinion. I, especially this year, think that the SEC tournament is completely and totally irrelevant to me. Like, if Arkansas won it, I'd be happy. I'd say, cool, it's the first time since 2000 and all of that. But it really means nothing. If Arkansas got bounced in the first round to LSU or to whoever, I'd be fine. I'm good. I do not care. The SEC tournament is mainly due in four teams that are trying to either get into the NCAA tournament or have a chance to increase their seeds. And... Increase their seeds. Seeding. <laughs> so knowing that, I think that the teams in this top four, you know, uh, seeding for what Arkansas is doing in Tennessee and Auburn and uh, Kentucky, this is really going to mean nothing to them. Like, I don't think of any of these teams losing their seed in the uh, or seeding in the NCAA tournament if they lose in the first round. Like, Arkansas is, again, a four seed, right? And I don't think that if they lose to LSU, they drop below a four seed. I wouldn't think. If they do, that's dumb because we know how the net rankings are pretty dumb, but that would be dumb. And I think it's the same thing for all four seeds there too. Now, a team like LSU, a team like Alabama, uh, two teams I think are in the NCAA tournament already, they would need some help to increase their seeding to where they don't get end up with a uh, pretty poor seed. This would be their opportunity to do so, to increase it. Um, the other teams like South Carolina is not in. I don't think AM is in. I, I don't actually, I don't think even Florida, maybe, maybe, maybe Florida goes on a run. Like, other than winning the SEC tournament, I don't think any of these other teams besides the top six really have a chance of making the NCAA tournament. But again, unless they go on some sort of run or something like that here in the uh, SEC tournament. So, yeah, like I don't know if that's maybe because of the baseball side of things this past year with the SEC tournament where Arkansas won it and Mississippi State went 0-2 in barbecue and then Arkansas didn't do anything in the uh, postseason after that and then Mississippi State ended up winning it all. Maybe I just got sour grapes about that and I'm like, I don't want to see that. I, I just want to I want to get us out and get us get us going, get us prepped. Like I always have like a little bit of a fear of an injury or you know something catastrophic happening. But like if Arkansas won the SEC tournament. What, that move them to a three seed? And if they lose first round, they, they're playing a four seed. Okay. All right. I mean, it doesn't really matter because it's about matchups anyway. Well, hold on. I mean, you play a 14 seed when you're a three seed, and when you're a four seed, you play a, a, a 13 seed. Or is it, how is it? Yeah, three played 14 and, and four play a 13. Okay. Like, I mean, that isn't, I don't care. Like, I would rather just get out of there, get healthy, get ready, get mentally right, and get ready and just do what you're supposed to do for the NCAA tournament. Like, that's how I look at it. And so I'm saying all this because I know that people will probably be like, <laughs> like if Auburn cuts down the nets in the, in the SEC tournament, cool, great. 
What does that give to you? Like, seriously, I, I, I ask you to challenge yourself. And this is kind of like how I am, because I'll, I'll be honest, it'd take me a while, even if I could, did get it right. Could you name the last five SEC tournament champions? I mean, seriously, could you? I know Alabama won it last year. Year before that, it didn't happen. Year before that, I, I, I would probably just like always guess Kentucky and then maybe have like a 50% chance of getting it right. But seriously, like, nobody cares. I mean, it's a cool little banner to hang up. And, and you know, it's it's something that you can at least have some sort of bragging rights on. But to me, I'd rather win the regular season. That's more important. To me, I'd rather just get ready and get right and get healthy for the NCAA tournament. And I think Arkansas will make sure of that and, you know, make sure that whether it's Adis Tony or any of the other players involved, uh, they'll make sure that they're uh, getting it done. But um, I, I don't know. I just I also don't think the matchup's very favorable for Arkansas in any ways in the SEC tournament because LSU, to beat LSU three times in one year is tough. Like, it was tough when you did it on the road in the first time. It was really tough when you when you played them at home because, I mean, they were this close to, to beating you and you needed a lot of things to go your way. But to do three times, I don't like their chances anyways. But that's okay if they lose to LSU. Like, that doesn't mean, oh, now they're not a Final Four team. No. No. I think they'll be fine. Now, if they do beat LSU, how it's set up, uh, they would end up playing the winner of more than likely, at least, the Auburn. It'd be Auburn. Because <laughs> whoever is in game, uh, I guess the game three would be AM or Florida. Auburn's going to be whoever that is. So if that happened, you'd have to beat LSU. Then you'd have to beat Auburn. And then more than likely, would have to beat Kentucky. <laughs> okay. Like, I, I, I want, I almost like want LSU to beat Arkansas. And so that way, because I know it pisses Auburn and Kentucky fans off so much that they didn't get a chance to beat Arkansas. Like you could always just point back to be like, yeah, well, well you beat you. No, sorry, nope, undefeated, 1-0, 1-0, we'll run along. But yeah, well, you guys weren't even there in the SEC tournament. So what, we beat you, beat you in our one matchup. How about that? 1-0, undefeated, never lost, ha-ha. <laughs> I mean, maybe that's just like my crazy mentality when it comes to trash talking to other fan bases. But still, I wouldn't want to play those teams. I want, I, I'll, I want to get ready for the NCAA tournament. That is what is going to happen. That, like, that's all that matters. If Arkansas won the SEC tournament, and then lost in the second round of the NCAA tournament, I would consider it to be a disappointment. Like, I would not care that Arkansas won the SEC tournament. It would not do anything for me. But maybe I'm the crazy one. Maybe I'm the wild one, but that's just my opinion. Folks, whew, March Madness. Isn't it great? Like, we get to talk about March Madness. Like, I love it. I love all the brackets. But the thing is, is, like, I try to bet on them, but I'm not very good at, like, betting on money. Like, I don't think – I can't even remember the last time I won a bracket – pool or anything like that but i'm going to be hedging my bets this year with stat heroes ncaa pick'em contest stat heroes ncaa single game pick'ems pits the star players against each other in an amazing hybrid between fantasy and sports gambling take control back from those handicappers that always seem to have the advantage and start focusing on the players you know best with a gameplay that doesn't rely on big spreads long odds or funky props stat hero gives you the advantage of resulting in their gamers uh winning four times more often why? Because Stat Hero eliminates the mystery about who or what you are going up against. It's the easiest and fastest way to get your sports action fix, and it's the simple, sleek gameplay that will have you playing in minutes. This is what daily fantasy is meant to be. So sign up for free right now at stathero.com slash locked on and use promo code locked on for a 100% deposit match. That's stathero.com slash locked on. Use promo code locked on. For a 100% match, again, stathero.com slash locked on using promo code locked on. Terms and conditions apply. We're also brought to you by Built Bar and how we know that by just listening to this podcast, you know how much I believe in Built Bar and how great it is. Uh, I'm trying to get ready for beach season. We'll see. You know, the weekends kind of can take a toll on me, but that's okay because during the week, though, I can have a lot easier time of eating healthier and eating right because Built Bar helps me out, especially when I need that quick snack. It tastes amazing. They have different flavors to choose from. It's healthy. It's got 17 grams of protein, only 130 calories, and it keeps me going throughout the rest of the day. It gives me that extra boost of energy that I need. And I'm telling you, folks, if you're trying to get right, get your mind right, get your weight right, get your health right, whatever it is, 
Built Bar is the way to do it. So go to Built.com, use promo code LOCK15 for 15% off your next order. Again, go to Built.com, slash promo code LOCK15 for 15% off at Built.com. You are locked on Razorbacks, your daily podcast on the Arkansas Razorbacks, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. All right, so final segment of the Locked On Razorbacks podcast. Uh, you know, we, we've talked a lot about Razorback sports, and again, we'll have some uh, guests and all that to do football, so maybe some baseball this week too. But uh, I did want to bring something up that may not necessarily be Razorback related, but I guess maybe we can force it to be, uh, that really bothered me over the weekend. And that was uh, <laughs> that was uh, Coach K and his final game at Cameron Indoor and Duke against North Carolina. Like, I have no problems with Coach K. Like, it's not that I don't like the guy or anything like that. I love the fact that Arkansas is 2-1 and one against him in their history. Of course, uh, one of those games being the most important one, winning the national championship. I love that because not many teams can say they have a winning record against Coach K. Um, but, like, they had this whole ceremony for him and, and this, and it was disgusting. The amount of attention being paid to this thing. Like, again, I get it. He's Coach K. Like, stepping down is a big deal. But, like, the swan song and, like, the ESPN dual broadcast that they had when they were just, like, a cameras on him at all times and, and all that was just gross. And then the fact that they lost to North Carolina was hilarious. Like, I I love that. Like, I love the fact that they played spoiler to Duke in, in his final game in Cameron Indoor. It just made, it just made me happy because it's – like, okay, you make such a big deal out of it, and then at the end of the day, the most important thing is winning the game. Well, you figure out about that. All you cared about is just uh, going out there and doing what you did and doing all the crazy ceremonies and all those things too. But uh, either way, I I will say that like watching Coach K give his like one of 18 speeches at the end of the game or whatnot, he did something that really made me wonder and like, start thinking about just the changing of the guard when it comes to coaches. Um and this is one of the things that always has bothered me about certain basketball, like sportsmanship. Guys, we, we sportsmanship is great. Sportsmanship is something that should be encouraged. And I'm not discouraging sportsmanship. But like when some of the players or some of the fans, I should say, of uh, Duke started booing uh, when like North Carolina was mentioned by Coach K and all that, uh, he basically was like, hey, stop, stop that. Quiet down, quiet down. None of that. None of that. Stop it. Stop it. Tell the fans to stop booing because he just mentioned North Carolina, their most heated rivalry that they just lost to. And um, I'm just sitting there and I'm like, you seriously booing? Like you're, you're having an issue with your these fans booing North Carolina? Like, do you know how pissed off I would be if Eric Musselman like was giving some sort of speech in front of a Razorback crowd and mentioned Kentucky Wildcats and like people started booing Kentucky and he goes, hey, hey, guys, settle down. Settle down. Hey, none of that. We're class here. No, shut up. It's sports. They'll get over it. They're fans. They're booing the opposing team. Who cares? Like, are their feelings going to get hurt? Or does it make you look bad? No, it makes you look like a sports team. Because that's what people do. Like, you just, they boo other teams. They boo other players. Like, I saw this too. Like, I'm a Celtics fan. I saw Jason Tatum when... Uh, the Celtics fans were chanting Kyrie sucks because of the whole Kyrie or everything and all that. He told everybody to settle down. He's like, stop, stop that guy. Stop that. Stop that right now. Shut up. Fans, that's what they're going to do. They're going to boo other teams. They're going to boo other players. That doesn't make them look bad. What makes them look bad is when they do things like what Tennessee did when they start throwing mustard bottles on the field <laughs> like they did. That's bad. Can't do that. Uh, but booing and stuff, get out of here. That's no problem at all. Which, by the way, real quick, I saw Tennessee said, uh, speaking of that, Tennessee fans and some people on Twitter are like, Arkansas has the most sensitive fan base of all time, my word, and all that. I'm like, y'all threw golf balls in mustard bottles on the field in a football game. And you're going to say Arkansas is sensitive? No, I think Tennessee fans are just a little bit more sensitive. Tennessee fans are insane. Like, I know Arkansas fans are too, but Tennessee fans are insane. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm just... I don't care that Arkansas lost. I think it was kind of funny to put the pressure on them, though, where they started, you know, you know, puckering up a little bit and saying, oh, crap, we may lose this game. But still, um, anyways, uh, that's all I got. Appreciate everybody listening into the Locked On Razorbacks podcast. Be sure to like and subscribe to the podcast on iTunes or on Google Play. You can also get after me on Twitter at Buzz John Neighbors for any questions, comments, concerns that you may have. And we'll keep it going from there. Same podcast time, same podcast channel tomorrow afternoon. 
Have a great day, everybody. We'll see you then.